Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sportsman on News. I'm Joe Borick. And, excuse me, after falling to the Dallas Stars yesterday, the Philadelphia Flyers tried to snap out of it and not have a 13-game losing streak today. Now, I don't think that's going to be easy. The Islanders are finally starting to get their things together there, and they're actually a 500 team now, and they're looking to be kind of the Vancouver Canucks of the East, so to speak, um, and become a rebounding team that starts working their way up the standings where our Flyers are in nowhere land, to say the least. Um, right now, they did make a move. Somebody familiar with Mike Yo, as well as Chuck Fletcher from the Minnesota days. Uh, John Torchetti, who was the interim for Minnesota in between when Yo coached there to Bruce Boudreaux, and was also the interim for other franchises like Florida uh, as well and the LA Kings. Uh, he's a guy that brings a lot of experience. Some people don't like it from a PR movie because he was with the Blackhawks in 2010. He wasn't mentioned in any of the documents or anything like that. He's an assistant coach. Probably didn't have the um, power where they said with that meeting and everything, that was all the top guys, even the assistant GM, according to the investigation, uh, wasn't privy to information. So I would doubt he knew anything, but, but who knows? You never truly know if the people not questioned knew anything or not. But uh, from a hockey standpoint... Uh, he has a lot of experience. He has experience with the GM. He has experience with the head coach. Um, my question is, did we bring him in to, to uh, one, we knew we needed another assistant. You couldn't just keep going with a short bench. But did we bring him in to make Yo more comfortable and show that we're, show, we're kind of stating that um, he might be the guy going forward? Or did we bring him in because he has experience with the Yo? So hopefully it helps, but also to put more pressure on you because this guy's been a interim but never has been a head coach at the NHL level. Um, so did we bring him in because he's a guy that is kind of on the cusp that's had opportunities as an interim? And maybe he'll get the opportunity to coach here if uh, they don't like what they see from Mike Yo for the rest of the season. Or did we bring him in just to simply help Mike Yo? Uh, that, that's something that would be interesting to see. But of course, yesterday, because of bad neutral zone, they chipped it. Rupe Hintz was able to get a breakaway then. And then Jacob Peterson was able to have a snipe in front. Provy had a fortunate goal. Otherwise, the Flyers would have been shut out. Um, that one ended up going off a of Klingberg in front. Uh, in order to get a win, this team's probably going to have to play um, a one, a much more physical game. They're probably going to have to just get in the opponent's head somehow early. And they're going to have to win a not dirty in sen the old sense of like 60s, 70s, 80s hockey highlights. I've seen dirty, but I'm saying like play a scrappy game where they battle in front of the net. And I don't expect them to do that because I haven't seen them do it for in forever. But you're going to have to win by just having sloppy plays work. Like have those fortunate bounces go your way. That happened with Klingberg like it did early in the season. But but more. That's how we were really getting fortunate early in the season in the first, like, say, 12 games because we were having bounces go our way. You had one happen yesterday. It still didn't give you any momentum. Once the Stars were able to come back, just like any other game, uh, the Flyers just seemed like they didn't have any answers and seemed defeated. you got to get rid of that damn defeated uh, personality that you have right after the other team seems to score one goal, whether you scored a goal, two, or not. And you got to be able to find a will and a way uh, to get away from this losing streak. As it stands, obviously, our Flyers are in a down spiral, and they're going to be a team with a pretty good pick this year. But as it stands right now, they're not going to have like one of the top threes because there's other really future teams in the league this year that are struggling that might end up getting those picks. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do going forward. Obviously, we have people on the trade block. What do they decide to do coming into the trade deadline? Um, that's going to be interesting to see. But our Flyers are obviously unfortunately, in free fall right now. So they bring in John Torchetti to try to stabilize it, who has some experience with Yo and some experience with Fletcher. Tonight they're playing the New York Islanders. Uh, as I stated, um, personally, I don't feel oh too confident about playing the uh, Islanders because uh, they're a team, like I said, that are moving in the right direction when the Flyers are moving in exactly the wrong direction. The The Flyers haven't, haven't won a game in 12. The Islanders are 7-2-1 and one and looking more like Barry Trotz Islanders as they got healthy and don't have the gigantic effects of COVID now. Um, th th they've been looking a hell of a lot better, and they're a team that's coming in firing on all cylinders. Um, there's no way with the way the Philadelphia Flyers are playing. It's also in New York. Uh, which is not beneficial in that beautiful new stadium. 
Uh, there's no way with how the Flyers are playing, I'm predicting anything good to go for them in this game. Uh, hopefully, they're able to get the win. I will say that. But when you have the Islanders team, you have a goaltender like Sorokin, you got Borley back there, you have the defense of the Islanders um, in the Pelics of the world, uh, the Pulaks of the world. You obviously got Barzell, you got the Baileys of the world. Uh, you got you got a very solid, filled out team, the Palmaries of the world that are veterans. So you got a solid team that plays, but they, they have guys that just play really well and buy into Barry Trotz's system. Pirlo Wisdom put out a video about them if you want to check it out on his channel. Barry Trotz, really, with the Islanders, they have a solid team, like I just said, but the keyword is solid. I don't know if they necessarily have a playoff team like they've competed for the past couple years, but they always tend to have veterans come in or guys like the Wallstroms of the world come in and finally get it going, or even if he's not producing points, Kiefer Bellows does what Trotz wants him to do, so on, so speak, like I said, guys that buy into the system, which is an issue with the Flyers. It, it seems like nobody's able to really get anybody to kind of buy into anything of late because there's just such a defeated uh, personality and vibe around the team uh and and that's something you didn't even see in time to struggle before when i was growing up when this team struggled you never saw that just completely out of it uh vibe and i think that's from a top-down effect uh th th that's different now because there's not as much accountability with that Schneider, there's no way this would be going on there would be too much accountability uh with comcast and scott there is none so it is what it is. Hopefully we start trending in the right direction. Uh, they brought in John Trichetti. We'll see what he's able to do. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Hopefully the Flyers can get a win on the board tonight. Please subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget.